Shy Biz Hub is super excited to be doing our second virtual spotlight. So we have a treat for you all today. For the for the pride for the pride month, we have Miss Roxana Daniel Hill here, and she's going to tell us so much about her company and everything that she's doing. So we can't wait to hear all of the great things that she's going to share about what she's doing. So we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you you wanting to actually talk to us today. So I want to kick it off by actually having you share with us. Tell us about Taj Development. What is your role? How did the company actually um, start? Mike is muted for some reason. Can you hear me? You can hear me now, it's unmuted. Um, thanks Kendra for having me on. Thanks Shabiz for inviting me. This is very exciting, you know. Um, to be able to, 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 to be invited to tell a story about me and Taj Development. So I thank you guys very much for this opportunity. Uh, Taj Development actually came out of uh, another business that we had started. Uh, my part, my co-founder and partner and I, Margaret Wilson, she was a school teacher and she was my client. And she was talking about retiring and that she wanted to invest her money in something so that, you know, she'd have a nice retirement. And she had been um, having some work done in her home by a traditional contractor in uh, one of the big box places at that time. And she felt that she was disrespected and, and, and not treated as an equal because she was a woman for one. And um, she was a lesbian for two. Right. So she was asking me, how did I feel about it? And I told her, told her that because I had been in construction since 1977, I was one of the first round of women in the painters and decorators council in the early eighties when the union started taking women on. Right. So I had the experience and the, and, and the feeling. So let's deal with the feeling of being dismissed and feeling mistreated and 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 dogged in so to speak in in this industry um i explained to her that that experience so we decided that we were going to start something that would be respectful and that would be inclusive and that would practice integrity and transparency and construction which was unheard of at that time and so she and I started another company at that time called Construction Services. Um, not being being a trades person and not a business person eh, didn't go very well. Uh, so we hired an accountant and he said, you know what, you're going to have to just dissolve that company and start it anew. And we talked to my granddaughter. Her name is Tajua. And we said, we're going to start the company over. We're going to rename it. What do you suggest? And my little baby at 12 had a big old ego. And she said, name it Tajua Construction. So we came up with Taj Development in, in, in a compromise. So that's, that's, that's the story of the start of it. Um, but um, it's, it's moved into a, a completely different, a different area and, it's ended up being bigger than and greater than what we really anticipated in the beginning. Thank you, Roxana, for sharing all of that. You actually highlighted, I mean, you're going into my next question, highlighting, you know, some obstacles that you have faced, that you and your, your partner in business have faced being a woman and being LGBTQ, you know, can you share a little bit about what has helped you overcome those obstacles? Uh, what does support look like, you know, as an entrepreneur in this space, um, facing all of that? Well, that's it's, that's an interesting question. Um, I thought about that a little bit, and it's it's kind of a loaded question. And how do you overcome it? Do you really ever overcome it? That would imply that society has made a shift or a change, right? Um, so you don't overcome it. You learn how to move in the space. You learn how to do things in a, in a way that people are more comfortable with having you in their space. Because most, most 
times the issues are people don't like what they don't understand. That's one part of it. The other part of it is generally the, the more hate that I get, as the children say, the more hate that I get is generally from people that are having issues with their own identities. And I bring to the forefront those insecurities and those doubts and those questions. And we don't like to address ourselves. We'd rather look at others and point the finger than to look at what's going on inside of us. Because a person inside that's comfortable with themselves will not have an issue with you. Those who are not always have an issue with you. So you don't, you know, you don't overcome the obstacles. You just learn to move differently inside of the space. I, I love it. I mean, we always face obstacles and we just needed to hear those encouraging words from you on how to move forward. Because if it's not one obstacle, it's another. So not letting that change your momentum and to continue to move forward with what you have to do. So that was very profound what you just shared. I, I really enjoyed that. Now, when we talk about your company, Taj Development, tell us what community are you located in? Or when you think about your client or, or customer base, where do a lot of your clients primarily live? And then talk a little bit about why is it so important to have small businesses in our communities? Hmm. Okay, we're located presently um, in the Inglewood, Auburn, Gresham area. Um, we just recently moved back into the area. We had moved into Beverly, but it didn't feel right. And what we have some very new and exciting things that we're working on. And COVID gave us an opportunity to kind of concentrate on it and work on it. So it's going to be really, really exciting over the next few years. So we moved back to where we were going to be able to do the most good we feel. And we're back in the Inglewood area. Our client base is real estate investors mostly and, and we do a lot of work in the commercial space. So they don't, they live all over, but most of, most of our investors are investing in the South side of Chicago, um, South suburbs and things like that. We do some work. We do a lot of work in um, the Northwest suburbs as well. So it, it varies, but presently we're, we're, we're in the South Shore and the Inglewood, Auburn, Gresham area doing some uh, residential re renovations and rehab. But again, we've got some exciting things going and we're moving into another area that um, uh, in the city as we move forward through the, the pandemic and the unrest, we're, we're excited about the future and we're looking forward to bringing in a lot of LGBTQ um, workers and training and working with them on uh, being able to work inside of the construction space, which is very homophobic a lot of times, you know? So you deal with a lot of racism, you deal with a lot of sexism, you deal with a lot of homophobia. And because you deal with a lot of that, it's, a, it's hard. It's, it, it's really, really difficult for uh, an individual to be who they are exactly and walk confidently inside of the essence of who they are. So our goal as a company and as a humanitarian is to be able to work with those that are plagued with those type of issues to help them learn a trade. Because, you know, once you learn a trade, there is nothing. You can have 15 degrees, right, and, and still work at McDonald's. But if you get a trade when the work is gone, mama, grandmama, the church members, everybody's going to need a light bulb changed, right? Somebody going to need a porch painted, something. <laughs> so we want to make sure that no matter what, it don't matter who you are, that you learn to trade. The trade is what we need, you know? This is the only industry that you can get in and make as much money as somebody that spent 150000 for an education. This is the one industry that you can do that in. So we're in a community we, with, our, with our feet on the ground. We're creating a, 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 a space that's going to be so wonderful. I'm not going to reveal it because I revealed a part of it and some people jumped out in front of me. 
But the universe said, we didn't give it all to you. We're going to give you a little bit at a time. So we're looking forward and we're, we're in the community. We're in Inglewood, but we're working with the Chamber of Commerce and, and working towards bringing in LGBTQ youths to work alongside uh, the heterosexual community. And what's great is this youth are so fluid and so much more understanding than when I was working through my space. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're in Inglewood and Auburn Gresham and we're all over the city, but our offices are is stationed in, um, in the Inglewood area. Amazing. Wow. I just keep being blown away by you. Um, appreciate all of that. So for our next question, you know, uh, June is pride month, happy pride. One of my favorite months. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. See, dropping wisdom over here. Every every month is Pride Month. Uh, but because of that, you know, we were curious to know you are a member of the LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce, and you alluded to them, I think, earlier before. And we we're curious to know what tools, what methods have you um, gained from being a member of the Chamber of Commerce that have helped um, your business grow. I have, um, I, I, you know what, my, whatever happened dropped, you said you're curious to know what tools and what, yeah. sorry about that, yeah. Tools um, or just any methods that you have learned from being a member of the LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce that have helped right, your right. business grow. Yes. I am, this is so wonderful, right? I get so excited. You can't hear me. It say I'm muted. Wait a minute. Okay, there you go. It unmuted me. So I get really excited about this because the, the chamber is an amazing place, right? For uh, any kind of business, actually. If you are LGBT friendly, it's hard for me to keep saying all of those letters. I just want you to know. So I'm kind of old school. So I'm going to just say gay, okay? Please, because that's a lot of letters. No offense to anybody, not leaving anybody out. Transgender, fluid, whatever you are, uh, uh, it's a lot of letters for me. But to, to say that, to be a part of this community, right, is an amazing piece anyway, right? But it's not an easy piece, right? Because there's always, you're always struggling or fighting. Somebody's always uh, feeling like they want to tell you that you're doomed to hell, right? However, not only am I, it's, it's easy for me because not only am I a lesbian, right, I'm black. And I have the wonderful fortune to be female, right? So it's 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 a, a a triple threat for most people. But the 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 chamber being in the position that it is has placed me in a position that I never thought I'd be in, right? Being an African American black woman, um, I've been around the construction industry again since 1977. I've been, um, I was around when the women, Chicago Women in Trade started. I was around when the Women's Business Development Center, had he put that together, when um, all of those things came together, I was around, right? And if they ever go back into their records, they'll see all of that. I've been a part of the Uptown community. I've been a part of the Chatham community. I've been a part of Inglewood. I've been a part of a lot of communities. However, as a business person, I never ever received the amount of attention that I did and help that I needed until one, the first thing that I did was I went to the Chicago Urban League who gave me an education, right? That most people will never get, but they, they gave me an education in business that, I'm sorry, that's my study time. <laughs> it gave me an education in business that introduced me to the chamber for the second time. And when I went to the chamber, I was fortunate enough to encounter a little bitty guy, right? A little short guy. And his name was Jeremy. 
And I was sitting there and I was there for uh, 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 an engagement that Christy Weber from Weber Landscaping was giving. And we were talking about it. And I was thinking about my certifications, right? We were doing the MBE, WBE, and they were talking about this LGBTQ certification. So I'm sitting back and I'm thinking about it. So I go back and I talk to my partner. I talk to Margaret and I said, what do you think about us doing that certification before we finish off the rest of them? And she said, you know, it, 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 let's try it. It was not easy, right? <laughs> it was like, how do you prove you're gay? <laughs> so she had a harder time than I did, though. <laughs> but we, we, we did the certification. We won a, a pitch contest, went to Tampa, got to meet the NGLCC, the, the, the corporate, the, the world headquarters for the certification. And we have had so much help and support. It has amazed us in, in ways that I never imagined, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm glad, we're fortunate, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to the future. The opportunities that they're bringing to the table now um, are amazing. Of course, it's up to us, right, to do the work and be able to market and sell ourselves. But the opportunities that they're bringing to the table are amazing and phenomenal. And we're excited and we're, we're, we're so happy with our partnership that we're looking to go to Georgia and partner with them as well. And anywhere else the chamber is, we're going to go and we're going to support and we're going to work and we're going to develop. And we're hoping that the construction industry, which is very, very important, right? to open up the doors to our community to give us the opportunities that we so richly deserve because we put a lot and we've contributed a lot to this space. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Kendra. Hey, I'm back. I apologize. Thank you. I'm back. So that really is profound because it really means a lot that you have found great value in a, a local chamber and i know that sometimes there's a struggle for a lot of uh, startup businesses small businesses they really find they're having difficulty finding someone that can relate to them so it's great that you were able to meet jeremy he's phenomenal um, we partner with him a lot and so we're thankful that you have been able to cultivate that relationship so i want to go back to what you mentioned a moment ago being a woman being African-American and then being lesbian. So can you kind of shape for us, how has entrepreneurship changed or what changes have you seen since you've actually started uh, Taj Development, whether it be positive changes or maybe some things that still need to change? <laughs> wow, you know what? That's great. Here's here's what, <laughs> that's funny. Here's what um, I thought about. First off, I'm a serial entrepreneur, right? And my start in entrepreneurship started back in the 80s, right? And then um, in the 90s, uh, I, I formed a partnership with a, a carpenter uh, that was a friend of mine at the time. And we created, uh, we called Women at Work, right? Chicago Women at Trace has, had started and we came up with Women at Work. So it was just she and her, I was a painter and she was a carpenter. Um, it wasn't a good mix in the partnership and we were both young and, and, and misguided. So it, 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 it dissolved, but it was the beginning of the entrepreneurship book for me. So since then I've done this, I've actually have, um, been an entrepreneur since 92. And this is actually like maybe my, this is my fourth business successful. I made mistakes because I didn't have the business skills and tools. So here's, this is where the change comes in. So I had my, uh, my first mentor was my uncle, right? His name was Ronald. I loved him. He was the only entrepreneur that I knew, right? That was black. He was African-American and I was so proud of him and I loved him so much. And he encouraged me at 18 to do what I was doing. So I would, I wanted to start my business and I would go to him and I call him up and I'd be like, Uncle Ronald, how do I do so-and-so, so-and-so? And he gave me the best advice and he was the best mentor in the world. He said, go find out. And what that meant was I had to get up, I had to go to the library 
to discover the answers, right, of how to start a business and what that looked like. And the library, I can't think of the name of it, but it was the only library you either had to go downtown, but there was a library. I was living in uh, Uptown. There was a library on Lincoln Avenue right off of Montrose. That's where they had business culture. So I'd have to go over there for hours. I'd be in the, the library. And then all of a sudden around 93 and 94, the internet came up, the World Wide Web, right? So I had my computer. And I was trying to get on the worldwide, and they had AOL, and you had to dial up, do, 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 and it'd take forever, and you just sit there, and you wait, and then it would come on, and it'd be nothing there. So I would say to myself, it'd be so cool if the library had all of this information on this system, and but it didn't. So I'd have to go downtown and do my research and do that. So what has changed? What do you think has really changed? The World Wide Web changed. These Young folk has, they have so much information at their fingertips. Do you understand? I tease them and I say, I say all the time to, to my millennials and my Gen X's, Z's, I say, you know, if you give me two weeks, I can, can become a heart surgeon on YouTube. That's all I need is two weeks. It'll show me everything to do in two weeks. But that's what's changed the most. That's one of the things that's changed. The other thing that changed is the fact that the, the because of that web, it has opened up the world to, 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 to people in a way that when I was coming up, we didn't have. I grew up in the 70s, right? And right before uh, the riots, and they killed when they killed King, right after they killed King and the riots took place, the neighborhood I grew up with, they now call Bronzeville, but it, it was the low end is what we called it at that time. I grew up right in the middle of the highway of, of 47th Street. That but if you came into this to this city at that time, you were able to find everybody in, in everything that was in the African-American community right there. So I grew up where we had black businesses and today I'm seeing that come back. It had deteriorated after, uh, after desegregation, black businesses were gone and now they're coming back. So I'm seeing a lot of change in those areas and young folks are, 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 are expanding and growing faster now. I think we're slow. That's my change. Okay, I'm. Are you no, guys I'm there? there? It was for a little I bit. I apologize. So, okay, Roxana, yeah. we have one last question that we wanted to ask you to to close us out. Um, so, when you when you think about everything that you just described, and then you think of currently what we're experiencing um, with a lot of businesses being impacted by COVID. Most recently, we've seen a lot of things um, in the news. We know a lot of businesses that have been impacted. Um, their businesses have been um, impacted with physical damage because of you know, the civil unrest. So talk to us about what resiliency means to you, especially during this time. Wow. Resiliency means, what does resiliency mean to me? being able to bounce back, right? Being able to withstand, um, being able to be knocked down, stepped on, spit on, talked about, feeling mistreated, failing, doing the same thing to somebody else, being able to, 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 to get up, right? And start all over again and try again. Being able, resiliency to me means I can shed a tear or two or 10 and still come back and put my best foot forward and do the next right thing. Not have to hurt anybody in the process, not have to down anybody in the process, but to be able to get up regardless to what has happened to me. So that's two things is, is when, I, when I think of resiliency, I think of my mentor, um, my scholarly mentor, um, Jackie Anderson who told me, she said, you know, she, her, she too was, was a lesbian and a professor. And she said to me, she said, Rocky, you know what? And that's what they call me. Outside of Big Sexy, right? They do call me Big Sexy, but they call me Rocky too. 
<laughs> and she say, Rocky, you know what? She say, we have two sets of people that she and I live in. We live in uh, the LGBTQ community and then we live in the black community. So we have we have, we have several things happening here and we're women. So again, I cannot stress that enough that there are three things that are happening here. Sexism, racism, and homophobia, right? So she said to me, she said, of all of the people that have been discriminated, and this is not to take anything away from anyone because slavery is uh, uh, has been experienced by the Irish, by the Jews, by the Egyptians, by so many different people, right? Different classes of people. But the difference is for me as a black black person first, resiliency is that I'm able to survive and move forward under the same government that enslaved me. We're the only people that live under that same environment, right? But we still move and look at us now as black folk, when I say Black Lives Matter, and we have to say that right now, as black people, while we're asking and demanding now for change that we shouldn't even have to ask for, we are the we are the only race of people that still live under the same regime, right? That the same government that enslaved us. That's resiliency, right? That's the best part of resiliency because we still thrive and we still strive. As uh, LGBTQ, I live in a community and uh, I live in a black community that's homophobic, that has been homophobic. The church tells me I'm dying, going to hell and I'm gonna burn and everybody and my, 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 my gay brothers are gonna do the same thing. Anything that they can do to bring me down as an LGBTQ, they do that. But we still thrive and we still grow and we still expand and we still love, right? As a female, right? I live under a regime that sometimes gay men can be very sexist, right? And the African-American men and we live. So in all of that, we still, you still move forward. You still do what you do. You still put your best foot forward. You still love, you still be kind. You still be generous and you still remain hopeful. That to me is what resilience is. And that is also how we strive and we thrive forward in our business with those same goals and morals and ideals that no matter what they do, they will never stop us, right? Nothing that they can do to prevent me and my team from moving forward will, will thrive because we're resilient and we will remain resilient and we will remain hopeful and kind and generous and transparent in the business that we do. That's my idea of resiliency. And sitting through the unstableness of the internet. <laughs> wow, so we are grateful um i mean we were so excited to have you on so that the world can hear your journey and your story and i think the last question really summed up why we wanted you on the resiliency and what we've actually been able to experience and hearing you talk at other events so shabby is extremely grateful and we are appreciative that you have taken time out of your day to share your story and we know that the world is going to definitely respond in a positive manner because you're speaking from the heart positivity and just really providing us with the knowledge and i think that that's phenomenal so we are forever grateful thank you so much thank you thank you i am humbled yes. by you guys asking i am humbled and and keep it up and i'm excited about the shot biz whole spotlight and it's going to be phenomenal and i'm going to be watching it every time and i'm going to push you out i'm listen you got my love and honor Thank you so much.